This time on Road and Race, I zinc nickel plate all my rusty bits. Hello and welcome to another episode of Road and Race. In this series of videos, I'm tackling the rust on my 350Z. In part one, I stripped down the entire underside of the car to get an idea of what we're dealing with and went through and inspected each part. And in part two, I went about treating the rust on the chassis and suspension parts using the four stage rust buster method. In this episode, I'll be dealing with the remaining rusty bits, the nuts, bolts, and brackets. Whilst I could just simply buy all new items, I'd prefer to reuse and restore as much as possible. So I'll be using zinc nickel plating to go from this to this. Apart from making the parts look all shiny and new, it should offer a good level of corrosion resistance. Classic plating do a kit that makes the process as straightforward as possible. It comes with all the chemicals needed all pre-measured to the correct amounts. It also comes with the appropriate safety gear. To power it all, you can use a car battery. I got this adjustable power supply from them as you have a lot more control of the plating process. And as you'll see later, just makes things a lot easier. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description box. So without further ado, here's how I did it. Here I have the bolts and brackets from the front brakes. To start, they need to be clean and grease free. I have my own parts washer, but the kit includes a degreasing solution you can use. Next, you have to make sure that the parts are as clean as possible, ideally down to bare metal. So this means all the rust and all the paint needs to be removed. I used a grinder with a 40 grit flap disc for the brackets and a drill with a wire brush attachment for the bolts. Here's where it counts though. The cleaner you can get the parts now, the better the plating will be. Saying that, there will always be some areas in the parts you can't quite get to, especially on smaller, more fiddly items. So to get the parts rust-free in these areas, I used another kit from Classic Plating, their Electrolytic Cleaning Kit. Here it is all set up. There's a loop of copper around the edge that has steel plates hanging off it into the mixed up cleaning solution. You then hang what you want to clean into it, connect up the power, and off you go. Here I am using the voltage controller set to 24 volts. Come back in about 30 minutes or so, depending on how rusty the parts are. And hey presto, rust free. It does leave the items quite dull, which is fine for plating, but if you want a shiny finish, you'll need to give them a quick blast with the drill again. So let's get to the plating process itself. It consists of six, count them, six buckets of stuff. First off, the parts need degreasing with a dip in the alkaline degreaser, then into water. Next, into the dry acid pickle. This strips off oxides and acts as an activator for the plating. After two minutes, move straight into the electrolyte. This setup is like the cleaning bucket before. Copper wire around the edge, but this time we've zinc and nickel plates hanging off it. Now, how much current do we need to set on the controller? Well, set it too high and it will plate too fast and you get a rough kind of dull finish. If you set it too low, then it'll work. It will just take ages. Ideally, you want to plate at 100 milliamps per inch. I'll put the calculations in the description box, but I found if you slowly increase the current until you see a good amount of fizz, you should be okay. The whole thing takes a bit of practice. The first one or two times you do this, it, you won't get great results, but after a while, you, you start to get a bit of a feel for it. After about 30 to 60 minutes, when you can see a nice even coating has formed, take it out. Then it's a quick dip in the water and then into nitric acid for 20 seconds. Now it's time to finalize the plating and give it a color. The kit comes with a clear blue passative, but I've opted for the gold option because gold. You can also buy a black or olive green finish, but as before, I like the gold. Keep them in for 40 seconds, then a final dip into water, then leave them to dry. Now you can dry them with a hair dryer, or if you want, you can even put them in an oven at 55 degrees centigrade. But I found if I just left them in my cold garage for a day or so, it was fine. 
And that's it. Now you have some nice shiny parts that should be protected against corrosion for many years to come. And as a final comparison, here's the before and after. As I said before, practice really does make perfect with this because there's a lot of variables you can experiment with. The instructions you get from classic plating are quite, quite thorough <laughs> and um, you can really get quite nerdy kind of adjusting um, you know, tank temperatures and solution concentration and current strengths. So um, if you want to kind of really get into it, you really can. But for this video, I've really tried to simplify the process down to try and make it as quick and easy as possible. So that brings me to what's next in this series. As you may know, if you've watched the previous videos, this series is primarily about treating the rust on the 350Z. But if it makes sense to do a few cheeky upgrades whilst the car's in pieces, then why not? So since the suspension is in pieces, now will be the ideal time to replace all the worn bushings and upgrade them to stiffer poly bushes. So here I have a control arm from the rear suspension and this rubber thing here is the bushing and that holds the arm to the rest of the car. As the bushing is rubber, it's fairly flexible and that's good for day-to-day -day comfort when you're using the car as a daily driver. But this car's more of a kind of track day car. So I want something that will give me a bit better performance. So I'm gonna fit polyurethane bushings. These are a bit stiffer, so it should give a firmer ride, less body roll and should hopefully give more grip when on the track. I've got all the bushings for the car from Whiteline and to make the process of pressing them out and in again, I got this kit from Sealy. So in the next video, I'll be pressing out all the old bushings and fitting new ones. I'll also be restoring all the suspension parts whilst I'm at it. For example, this one's a rusty mess. Anyway, click here to watch the video when it's ready. And as always, thanks for watching.